Hi, I'm Avery. I'm a first year PhD student at Duke. Uh, this work started while I was an uh, undergrad at Columbia and continued after graduation over the summer with George, James, and Hubertus at IBM Research. And so eBPF programs have large visibility into system state with the wide variety of hooks that are available to these programs across kernel subsystems. They're extremely powerful for monitoring. Um, but when we look at getting output from these eBPF programs, we're looking at these event logs. Um, and so it'd be great for visibility into system state to have logs that we are able to verify log integrity. And so that's where non-reputable logging comes in. If we were able to verify eBPF logs and root them in trusted hardware, we'd be able to take the output from eBPF programs and use their configurable user-defined um, approach to providing non-reputable logging for workload and environment specific data. And so when we look at this event log, we have no way of verifying its integrity. It's coming from user space, it's being logged by an eBPF program. But what if we were wanting to take this monitoring output and verify it remotely to build trust in system state? We would be unable to trust this. And so the addition of non-reputable logging would allow for the verification of workload and environment specific data for eBPF programs. And so when we look at building this trust, we're starting with a chain of trust that starts when the system boots. Um, this chain of trust is cryptographic measurements, so a hash of software components that is built up throughout the boot process. Each component will measure the component that precedes it to build this chain of measurements. And so these measurements are hashes that are then recorded in a trusted hardware. And so the trusted hardware we're talking about is a TPM. Um, so a TPM is a microcontroller that is used to store artifacts that can be used to authenticate a system. And so a TPM has keys that are burnt in by the manufacturer that can be used to identify the platform. But we're really looking at these platform configuration registers or PCRs. And so a TPM has about 24 platform configuration registers. These registers can be changed by um, the OS or firmware by a process called PCR extension. And so a PCR extension is taking the value that's currently held in the register and concatenating it with the value that the firmware OS wants to add and hashing this to put back into the register. And so this value held in each register is a verifiable chain of hashes um, that can be replayed to verify system integrity. And so when we're looking at extending these measurements, we have Linux IMA. And so the integrity measurement architecture aims to extend these measurements throughout runtime. And it does so by measuring applications when they're executed. Um, IMA will measure executable content to detect changes in file integrity. And that can be used to attest to the integrity of a platform. And so IMA will take these measurements and log them in a log and store them in the PCR register as well to provide a chain of hashes for content that was executed on the system. And we can take these logs as well as the boot measurements to build trust in remote environments. This is done through attestation. And so attestation takes an attesting machine and it will take evidence. Um, this evidence can be a TPM quote as well as um, a log that can be replayed to ensure the integrity. And it will be sent to a remote verifier to verify its integrity. And so when we look more closely at attesting system properties, we have an attesting machine with an attestation agent that will send a request to a relying party, um, which will send a challenge. And then the attesting machine sends evidence. This evidence is fed through a policy um, engine in the verifier and relying party to attest whether a system is in a trusted state. And if it is, um, we can send the machine a payload, um, whether that be keys or otherwise, because we have attested that this machine is in a trusted state. And so the project that we worked on is non-reputable logging of eBPF programs. So taking this chain of trust that's, boot, that's built throughout the boot process, 
Um, we want to be able to measure and log the output of eBPF programs. And so given an application A that is loading an eBPF program, let's say that the eBPF program wants to store this measurement in a non-reputable log. And so this will be fed through our kernel module. Um, the eBPF program provokes a measurement, um, which is then measured and carried out and processed in our kernel module interface. This interface will extend the measurement to an IMO log and store the value in a PCR register to assure that the um, to ensure that this log can be verified um, so that we can build trust in its integrity. And so when you look more closely at this measurement interface, um, this takes the form of a kernel module. And so eBPF programs um, are allowed to use kernel module functions since um, kernel 6.0. Um, so we define a kernel module function, BPF process measurement. And so this function is available to eBPF programs and it will allow them to provoke the measurement. Um, and then this measurement will be formatted into a log entry, appended to a log, and extended to the PCR value. And from the eBPF side of things, we can see that this BPF process measurement function um, is used from the eBPF probe side. And so because we're interacting with the TPM, these the eBPF programs need to be sleepable because we're interacting with the hardware device. And so any eBPF program can provoke the measurement and storage of these formatted files and data. And for our use case, we were looking at Linux IMA. And so when we look at this picture, we have IMA that is measuring um, system applications. What happens when we introduce containers into this picture? IMA will measure the individual applications, but there's no way of tying these applications back to the, the containers. And so when we look at the resulting log from IMA, how can we tell which of these measurements is coming from a container? How can we tell which application is being provoked by this container? To be able to verify container integrity, we need a way to tie these integrity measurements to individual container instances, to build a chain of measurements from hardware up to each individual container in instance to build trust. And so our goal was to take the container measurements and namespace them. Containers are isolated through a combination of namespaces and C groups. And so if we're able to associate the measurements with the namespace that provoked the measurement, we're able to separate each of these log entries with the namespace that the application is associated to. And so using the MMAP file LSM hook, which is the same hook that is used to provoke measurements for IMA, um, we're able to attach an eBPF program. And this eBPF program will take the namespace of the task calling MMAP, and it will use this to create a namespace measurement. And so the eBPF program will call the kernel module function for the logging and measurement interface. It will measure the file, append the namespace, and put this in a log in a way that we can attach the namespace to each of these measurements. And so if we look closely at this log, it looks a bit different from the original picture we had of the IMA log. Um, that is because we are extending our namespace measurements that are provoked from eBPF to PCR11 to separate the host IMA process from the namespace process that um, we are doing our namespace additions of the log. And so we can see previously that when this Podman container that was executing hello executed, we couldn't tell which, whether the host or a container was executing this. But with the addition of the namespace, we can tie this measurement back to a container that was existing on the system. And this is all done without requiring changes to the kernel through using eBPF. And so when we're looking at evaluation for extending the, to the TPM and appending to a log from eBPF, um, we're looking at a 
On the TPM side, the hardware TPM side of the evaluations, we think that this is pretty fair. Um, and then when we're looking at the VTPM, we see quite a bit of overhead when using an, uh, an eBPF solution rather than a, an in-kernel solution. And so these evaluations were done by creating a, a wrapper to ptrace, um, which executed a file, stopped the file's execution after the first instruction. And so from there, we can then isolate the measurement and the TPM extension that's added from this overhead. And so this project aims to provide non-reputable logging um, for eBPF programs. This has a wide array of uses as we can now enable the, the logging of workload and platform specific system properties from eBPF programs. Thank you. I mind because I can't see that far, so I didn't understand. So you extend, so so you differentiate, so you measure to different PCI register, or do you extend the hash? Yeah, so we're recording two separate measurements because we're not interfering with the host IMA process. And so we have our measurements that are namespace that are being provoked by the eBPF program that is extended to PCR 11. And so we have two separate measurements one from system IMA versus our eBPF version. And if you have many more? Of course, yeah. If at this point we would be duplicating the, the amount of measurements by adding the namespace on top of this. However, this is configurable via host IMA um, policy. But it feels you can do the same by just extending the hash, I mean, cryptographic hash, so you can mix the the, uh, your namespace there, and you can even use the same register if you don't have to start using different registers. We use different registers for just separating the two processes. Um, but I mean, you're it's, right. it's visually it's better, of course. But like if you know, if you have to start scaling this, feels like you can. And if you don't want to make changes in IMA, you can just start mixing with crypto. You know, the, the hashes will will be different, and this is how you will differentiate. Yeah, we we actually. Do, do the namespacing, as you say. We extend the hash of the file with the namespace. Um, so we could, because they would be different, we just put it on PCR 11 for okay. that separation. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. A uh, couple of questions. The first one, um, in terms of performance, what sort of throughput of logging can you achieve with a hardware TPM versus a VTPM? Um, what exactly do you mean by that? Uh, as in how many events can I effectively log per second without overwhelming the TPM? Um, that's not something that we looked into, but okay. it would be something to look into in the future for sure. And the other was just, at the moment you seem kind of constrained by fitting stuff into the existing IMA log format. Are you looking at potentially having your own log, which can be used to just have a a more, uh, a less constrained format, uh, a more flexible way of logging information. For sure, um, using the IMA log format, um, we were leveraging existing IMA infrastructure, and that's why we're inheriting the log, inheriting the policies. And so we could look into to extending this to having our own logging format and having our own separate logs from IMA. Um, we were just leveraging the existing infrastructure to make this a more lightweight solution. Okay, I'm sorry, final thing. Uh, is this achievable with the existing kernel, or do we need some additional patches? This is. Yeah, um, it is achievable. Uh, I'm running this on a, a plain Fedora kernel. With Ubuntu, you'd have to recompile the kernel with a different config, but it requires no changes to the kernel. Awesome. Thank you. Great. Uh, the thing about the performance, so uh, there are, of course, other layer solutions to this. So like the thing that system D does for their, that system D journal, system D journal D for their non-repeatable log things. Um, they can also, you, well, there's a hook where you can uh, put it out to whatever else you want to, whatever other system you want to be able to uh, attest to a point in time of the log. And so you can uh, not necessarily be bound to uh, the performance of your TPM because it's sitting over uh, an LPC bus or whatever else. Um, and that, of course, would be low performance. But you can still, do the, the 
thing that uh, makes me really excited about this, which I think makes it awesome, is the uh, granularity of measurements that you can do. Um, and then you can avoid the performance issues by just periodically taking the tail of the hash at whatever time it is now asynchronously and, and putting that to some hardware log. The question then becomes, if you ha are measuring an event which is tightly coupled with something that might directly impact your integrity, if you want to do that synchronously so that your audit log is coupled with that event, then that becomes a question of how you do that. But it, would yeah, it, again, it depends on your use case. Yeah, hash. right. Uh, yes, naturally. Yes. Uh, in your previous slide, when you had this performance measurement, can you elaborate some more? Like, what was the issue? Why EBBF was so high? Like in the first one, for um, example. Yes, um, they're two di different machines, and so we don't know what's causing that overhead. We should have put a VTPM on top of the machine that had the hardware TPM and route measurements through that. Um, so we are unsure what's causing this overhead just because of the way that we ran the evals. Sorry, I was involved in doing that measurement. So <laughs> the virtual TPM is much faster. It overheads uh, magnitudes faster than the real TPM. So what you see there is that the real TPM, you don't see the difference because the overhead is already that, that big. On the virtual TPM, you see the actual overhead because the virtual TPM performs everything faster. It's in software. The TPM chip is a $10 chip taking 10 of a milliamp on the system. It's not very fast. Any other questions, comments? Uh, yeah, I'm wondering if you had considered uh, logs which are not just linear for the entire system, but some kind of hierarchical logging so that if you want to do attestation of uh, some, like if you assume that your kernel integrity is fine, but you want to do attestation of some particular subset of the workload, which is isolated from other workloads, and you want to attest to granular events that have happened within that, um, if you could uh, avoid a verifier needing to go through the whole log of events that are related to workloads that are unrelated to, work, to the state, like if you want to attest to something that's happening within your particular container, say, uh, if you had a cryptographic structure, which is not just one chain of law of, of hashes, but uh, where it branches into, okay, here I have now this chain of hashes for the stuff that's happening within this namespace, and then that gets merged again periodically for getting put into your TPM or whatever, then a verifier would not need to go through all the events in your system, but could go through just the chain of things that it cares about, as long as the integrity of the system is not subject to those other things that it wouldn't care about. That would be to the point earlier about other log formats that would be potentially interesting to me. Yeah, that, that would be interesting. Um, we just explored log formats um, for our use case. Um, and of course, this can be configured. Um, EBPF is very flexible. So you can, because we're working within a kernel module, you can absolutely customize this to your use case and to the log format that you desire. Um, we're just providing the infrastructure to do generic logging. Have to be very careful regarding the construction of how do we just to say that you have to, if you, if you do that, you have to be very careful to separate, like, you know, what matters and what not matter for the, you know, for the trust, because, you know, all the kernel matters, but that's the easy one. But then, you know, how, how much, like, you know, what can you do with the other things? And, and, and it becomes actually, it, it's, it, it can be tricky to get right if you try to kind of optimize this way. All right, thank you very much.